Today we are going to take part the brand new uh, Amazon Kindle Fire. This is the response to the Nook Color or the Nook Tablet. Um, it's got a, a very, very nice design. It's got a rubberized back with a Kindle logo emblazoned on it, the Amazon logo down here below it. Uh, on the bottom, you're going to have a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, a power button, and a micro USB port for charging, uh, possibly syncing later on. Um, everything right now is synced over the cloud. At the top, you have a couple of speakers into the top that have a surprisingly decent sound for such a small device. Uh, it has a 7-inch capacitive touch display. Um, there is an anti-reflective coating on it, which you can't really see with it off. But when it's powered up, you don't catch a lot of reflections in the, the display. Uh, the resolution is 1024 by 600. And uh, I guess it's time to crack this thing open and see how, what's inside. Uh, around the back side of it, it looks like there's a, a seam that runs across. We're going to try prying into that seam, see if we can pop the back case off. We're going to use, uh, we have some small uh, putty knife-like tools, some small iPad opening tools, uh, which you can pick up at our website at powerbookmedic.com. I'm just going to work my way in between the, uh, the frame and the back case. I'm trying to wedge my, my tool in here. I may end up trying the other side first, possibly even, just depending on how clips are designed. So I've got a little bit of a leverage there. Let's pop them back in place. So let's see what we can do here. So I can pry this bad boy apart. I do not recommend this being tried at home if you've never opened one of these before. Uh, it's a good way to break your new toys. Um, we are professionals. This is what we do for a living. We, uh, we fix these devices. Uh, sometimes you come in a situation where you've got a device that you've never, never opened before. Um, and there's a good learning curve. So we, we don't recommend trying this at home unless it's something that you, uh, you just understand what you're getting yourself into. It looks like these are just held in together with clips. You see some of the, the wiring is showing up here. I'm working my way around. It seems to come apart pretty simply, like most of the most of the previous generation Kindle devices seem to be coming apart very, very nicely. So I'm just gonna continue to work my way around and pop it loose from its clips. And voila. The back case is off. In the back case, it looks like you've got a serial number listed here. Um, just standard back case. Uh, inside, it looks like we've got a logic board here. It looks like this cable in here is running to the speaker system. Uh, there's a foam adhesive piece right here, which I'm going to gently peel back. And it uh, looks like that's where your speakers are going to plug in. You've got a large portion that's covered with a, a lithium-ion battery. Uh, it plugs into the board up here. Uh, it looks like everything else is pretty cut and dry as far as what it is. We're going to start taking some screws out, taking some things apart, seeing what we can find. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and unplug the speaker assembly and take out the screws and see if I can remove that. So I'm going to Go ahead and pull the power or the cable for that. Uh, there's a nice little groove along the edge that the wire falls into. And it looks like we've got two small Phillips head screws holding the speaker assembly in place. So I'm going to go ahead and remove those. Take them out of the way. Again, I, I'm very impressed with the design, uh, both externally and internally. Uh, I've been recently reading the, uh, the Steve Jobs biography and talking about how one of the things that was a big focus for Apple was having a, an elegant design inside and outside. It looks like Kindle has taken a page out of Apple's book with that. Uh, next, I'm going to go ahead and remove the battery. Um, it looks like it's just adhered in place. It looks like it's actually two cells. You can see a divider right here. Um, and then the big cover over top of it. 
So I'm going to loosen these cables, all the cables that are plugged in, and I'm just going to unplug everything I can unplug so I don't damage anything as I disassemble things. Again, the goal when doing ticket parts of anything is to be able to, to put it back together and have it working when, when all is said and done at the end of the day. And then uh, I'm going to use a small nylon probe tool to unplug this battery. Just working between these edges here and we'll wiggle it on back out. The battery itself probably has some kind of an adhesive that's holding it in place. And so I'm prying very gently with that because I don't want to I don't want to tear the battery. And there's definitely an adhesive holding it in place. So I'm using the back end of my nylon pulp tool to loosen the adhesive. Let's go from this side. Just gently work the tool across and lift this up. Now, so it feels like there's some adhesive in the center too. So now it's just a matter of being careful. The last thing you want to hear us say as we're taking these apart is oops. So I'll do my best not to have an, an oops moment here. See the adhesive on the bottom, holding it in place. And there's your battery. It's got two uh, lithium ion cells. Uh, they're both listed at 3.7 volts. They have 7.77 uh, watt hours listed on the back of the cells. Set that to the side. Looks here like we've got on the base an antenna assembly that runs all the way up here. Curls around and connects with a regular BNC connection, which I'm going to go ahead and unplug. I'll be willing to bet that that's going to be our Wi-Fi antenna down here. Looks like there's a copper lead that's grounding it out underneath the LCD here. Looks like there's also a couple of screws holding the, the motherboard in place, the logic board. Uh, a cover here with another serial number of some sort on there. And I guess I'm going to start taking those screws out and see what we've got underneath. Again, these are small Phillips head screws. I'm going to remove these. These are the biggest screws I've seen inside of this device so far. Now, the Kindle Fire, along with some of these other tablets, uh, has followed the lead of the, the iPad 2. And it's boasting a dual 1 gigahertz processor, a dual core processor. It looks like there is some kind of a video processor on the back of this cable, which I have a suspicion may be tied to your uh, part of your video. Uh, this is a chip here. I'm not sure what that is. Uh, it looks like it says Illitech. <laughs> It should be interesting to do some research and find out what that actually is. I'll move some more screws. Now, the Kindle Fire, I believe, comes with a standard 8 gigabytes of storage built in, but you have unlimited storage in the cloud with uh, Amazon. Um, who seem to be among the forefront of the cloud storage people, uh, allowing any of your Amazon content to be stored there instead of uh, directly on your device. Um, one of the apps that I, I tend to enjoy the most on my iPad and my iPhone is uh, an app called Pulse Reader. It's a, it's a news aggregator, and it's, it's wonderful for being able to, to pull together your, your favorite RSS feeds and be able to read them. Um, there is a socket here with a little a little cable that's clipped into the socket. I'm going to unplug that as well. And I should be able to lift this board freely from where it is. So we're just going to, we're going to lift gently. It feels like there may be some adhesive holding it in place. Um, and it looks like there might be a second board below it. I'm going to try and be very gentle as I lift this out. I 
I feel like there may be something else there. So I'm going to go ahead and take the screws that go around this mid-frame. And we'll start by removing those and see what else I can find here. Pull these cables free. As we progress, uh, we may update this video with, with more information as far as what these different cables are specifically. As we've had time to, to dive in a little deeper, I can say this is a, an item that has arrived to us. Uh, in the last 15 or 20 minutes or so, UPS dropped it off for us, and we've been waiting for it to come out, and waiting to take it apart. Let's see. So I see three screws. Uh, I don't see anything else holding this midboard, so let's see if this midboard comes up. i remove the tape. It's right here. Looks like there are two screws holding the display into the frame in the front um, underneath this tape. Use my metal pry tool here. Peel that back. It looks like this midboard does come loose pretty easily. Uh, let me take this antenna out of the way, we'll lift this up. I've got some resistance on this side. Looks like there are a couple of clips along this edge that are holding it in place. So I'm going to pop those clips loose, just gently shift them. And I've got some clips up at the top it looks like. Maybe. Maybe, maybe. I feel like I'm still receiving some, a little bit of resistance here. I don't want to yank anything yet. Let's look under this board. Board seems to pivot up. Ah, oh, and I see what's going on. We've got there's a heat shield underneath that was holding this in place. So this frame is working. This is a thermal pad, somewhat adhesive, that's working to to prevent any overheating on this board. So the board has come out nice and clean. The board that I saw underneath is a small board here, which looks like it has control over the mini USB and the headphone jack. So go ahead and remove those. I'll take out the remaining screws holding the midboard in place and continue to remove the assembly here. Again, very, very elegantly designed. Very, very easy to take apart so far. Um, makes me very happy because I don't have to explain what's happened once, once I come back to the, the owner with this. Say, what broke? Tell him nothing. So let's see. What are we lacking to release this display? Go ahead and take these other screws out that I see back here just in case. And it's just adhesive, it feels like. Again, it's holding it in place. Gently loosen and look underneath. See if we got anything caught. It looks like just some adhesive. 
Midboard is out. It's got an interesting design with a, an empty, empty hollow place here. Take out the two screws on the bottom. We'll go ahead and remove this display. Let's peel this little bit of copper adhesive here. It's part of the antenna assembly. Peel it back. So we'll lift this display out. And there is your LCD screen. Very nice. So the only cable is going to be this cable that so sits in the socket. That's going to be the LVDS cable. It's going to be the part that actually holds the LCD in place. It's a it's a standard LG display. It's an LD070 WS2. Nice display. Probably if you crack these in the future, you'll be able to pick them up over powerbookmedic.com. This chip controller here that you saw here probably has to do with the capacitive touch. A lot of the touch responses come from it. Uh, there's a little plastic clip that attaches to the power button here. I don't see any reason to have to pull it apart right at this moment. Um, and then there's a Wi-Fi antenna, which we can probably lift up, but because it's adhered in place, I think I'm going to leave it. I'm going to call that uh, a wrap on taking apart the Amazon Kindle Fire. Uh, you can find parts for your Kindle Fire over at powerbookmedic.com, and you'll find this repair guide along with over 250 other guides, uh, again, at www.powerbookmedic.com.